Hey. Blog Talk Radio. How you doing? It's King Nick Anthony coming at you one more time. Welcome you guys back to the swamp. All right. Nice to see that everybody's around. Everything's cool. How you been? How you doing? How your mom and them? All right, that's nice. Okay, cool. <laughs> now, everything's been okay on my side of the yard. But before I get into everything that I'm going to get into today and catch you guys up on what's been going on or what or what went down or what have you. I'd like to t- tell everybody to check out everything what we're doing here at uh, Blog Talk Radio forward slash at Anzic Media. You can check out the archives. It's Welcome to the Swamp with King Nick Anthony. And look up anything from past archives that you feel you can grow and learn from, all right? Um, you can check out the website of um, what and as media has planned what they got going at at www.adaensicmedia.wordpress.com um you can also see what they're doing on facebook at facebook.com forward slash at media and if you want to see everything what i'm doing what i got going or what have you then you can check me out at www.pippinpens.com that's p as in paul i as in intelligent p as in paul n as in nancy pens as in as is as in i have two pens p e n s dot com all right don't forget to sign up to the newsletter Okay, sign up to the newsletter. Please don't forget to do that because we have a contest coming up. Well, not a contest, a giveaway. A Christmas gift giveaway for people who are customers of Pip and Pen's Publishing, all right? So if you buy a book or you order a ghostwriter service from us or we edit something of yours, then you're automatically put in to that drawing or, or what have you, okay? I'm um, still trying to decide on whether we, A, Give out a Michael Kors watch. Nah, that's right. Mm-hmm. B, three gift cards worth one hundred fifty dollars each. Oh, well, excuse me, one hundred fifty dollars each, one hundred fifty in total. I apologize for that. And it's three gift cards of the winner's choosing. Or I pay down on a bill. Like give you a hundred dollars to pay down on whatever bills that you that you need to be need to get paid for the holiday all right but remember you have to be a customer okay so you have to buy something order a service and sign up to the newsletter okay don't forget to do that because every month along with serious content such as you know four side hustles you can get into that can make you money along with content such as that you also get two free ebooks from me and the ebooks that I'm giving you, they're of public domain, all right? These are classic books that are of public domain that you can just put inside your own computer, open up or your laptop, your tablet, shoot, your smartphone, and read while you're on long trips. You understand? You know, just giving you the gift of reading from me to you, okay? And also, if you're a customer, even if you don't win any of the contests or whatever, just by it being your birthday, we give you a $5 gift card on us from anywhere of your choosing, all right? That $5 gift card could go to a, I can hook you up with a Subway, 
$5 gift card, shoot, even a $10 gift card and get you a $5 foot long for your lunch on me, all right, on us, Pippin Pants Publishing Company, okay? All right, with all of that being said, with all of that, all that information being spread, let's get into what we finna get into, all right? If anybody wants to chime in, the number is one. Three four seven nine eight nine eight one eight three. That's three four seven nine eight nine eight one eight three. Just press one and chime right in. All right. We'll you give you two cents and we hear what you got to say. We have a healthy dialogue and everything's all right. Last week we spoke to Auntie Red Velvet about how feminism attacked the black family, which then then eroded the black community thus hurting our finances, finances, chances to uplift ourselves, all right? It's a, a part of the systematic breakdown which pulled us away from the civil rights movement and then lib- women's liberation and discombobulated a lot of things. And in my past shows, you can check the archives, you know, five things that, that men need from women, you know, I touched on how, you know, how women need to, well, one, keep themselves up. In other words, you know, work out, eat right, and don't necessarily have to be a fitness model, but do something, cook, clean, be domesticated, bring in some kind of money, be financially savvy, um, be educated in terms of learning her history and the world around her. If, you know, if she's college educated, that's a bonus, but as long as she understands how uh, knowledge of the world around her and know her role as a woman, meaning she uses her femininity as a as a guide and a gift and a certain power that she can wield with her man in order to have a healthy relationship. And last but not least, being financially savvy, being smart with the money. You know what I mean? Now, along with those episodes I normally touch on what females need, you know, what females need to do. Today I'm going to dig into the fellas because some of y'all, ugh, some of y'all, man, I don't know what's going on through some of your heads, brothers. I mean, I got love for y'all, got nothing but love for y'all, man. You know, I want to see every brother come up out in this world. You know, Latin, black, or Anglo-Saxon, don't even matter the race, color, or creed. I want to see everybody eat out here, you know. But the downside about it is, <laughs> the crazy part about it is, a lot of y'all think you guys are good dudes. A lot of y'all think you guys are on point. A lot of y'all think you guys know what you're doing, know what you're talking about. But in actuality, you guys are failing in a lot of aspects. There's a lot of things that you're dropping the ball on, and you're not realizing it. And a lot, of, and then because you guys aren't on top of your game, because you guys aren't on top of your game, you want to sit there, huff and puff, and get mad at those who are successful when they're not even thinking about any kind of hateration, holleration, or what have you. They're not thinking about any of that. They're thinking about what it is they, they got to do in order to come up so they can care, take care of themselves and their family, all right? That's what a lot of you brothers are missing out, straight up and down, you know? And it sickens me. It sickens me to hear some dudes complain about, you know, this, oh, this rapper getting this much money. Oh, shoot, not even that or whatever. Oh, I, I got a homeboy. He getting money, and he think he's shit. He act like he can't talk to nobody no more. I'm like, man, come on, really? And what's sad is you can step your game up as well, all right? And that's what I'm going to take my time to hit y'all up about, all right? For y'all to step your game up. Because to sit there and huff and puff and get mad when you can come up yourself, it's it's a mystery to me. It's a mystery to me, you know? All you're doing is making yourself look petty and disgusting, you know? It's a turn off from everybody for you to be a hater, okay? Quick antidote before I get into everything, all right? Quick anecdote. Quick history lesson, really, you know. You see, here in America, in the late 1800s, 
early 1900s, early 20th century, late 19th century, some black cities, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Rosewood in North Florida, shoot, um, down here where I'm at, Liberty City and Overtown, they had flourishing neighborhoods, okay? Flourishing neighborhoods. Yeah, they had some crime, but it wasn't as bad as how it is now, right? You have black-owned businesses. You know, you have, and when I say businesses, I don't mean just the, the hair shop, barber shop, weave shop, <laughs> and and the soul food restaurant or rib shack, and that's about it. Now, I'm not talking about that. I'm, we had that, but we also had doctors, lawyers, doctors' offices, lawyers' offices, insurance places, um, black-owned cab companies, black-owned. You name it, we had it. You know, if it was in today's times, what they were doing in those cities where everything was pretty much segregated, if they, if we were to bring over everything in, in today's time, we would, we'd have, like, black cell phone companies, black black cell phone companies, um, shoot, black, black tailors, black clothing stores, um, black electronic shops. Uh, black-owned um, car repair places. You see what I'm saying? Black-owned car lots that be selling the cars or what have you, you know? Black-owned gas stations. Black-owned watch shops and, and other accessories or what have you, you know? Black, shoot, might even have a black-owned Chinese food restaurant. Who knows, you know? <laughs> Bruce Leroy coming from Japan doing his thing, but... Bottom line, everything was black-owned if we were in today's times. Now, everything's flourishing. Everything is doing good, right? Now, the stain of, um, of racial injustice and why a lot of black folks distrust white people or whatever, because me, I get along with everybody, but the history of what others did is what makes the racial divide so bad here. You know, now from what I understand, in Rosewood, in Florida, you know they were making moves, making money, and certain celebrities in my in, back then when they came to Miami, Liberty City, and Overtown, they played in the Lyric Theater, or they stayed in in the hotels and in the boxing gyms on that side of the yard. You know, in, in Liberty City and Overtown down here. You know, Muhammad Ali when he had fights. He trained in the black boxing gyms around Liberty City, you know? Now, fast forward, you know, this integration comes along. Black-owned businesses start closing up left and right, you know? Drugs get dropped into the neighborhood. The school system, you know, they, they give us the worst teachers. Police harassment all day, every day. Then when you try to look for a job, just because you're named Tyrone, even if you have a degree and you're qualified, they'll shove you to the side, you know? And uh, it, it just for them to stay on top, the powers that be to stay on top, the powers that be who just so happen to be white for them to stay on top. Notice I said just so happen to be white because it could be anybody. Shoot, if you go to an Asian neighborhood trying to get a job or whatever, they'll look at you crazy. Inside their neighborhood, shoot, if me, being that I don't speak Spanish, if I go to Hialeah down here in Miami, in Miami-Dade County, they'll look at me crazy. You know what I mean? They'll shun me out. Oh, you don't speak Spanish? Pfft, bye. You can get up out of here. You know what I mean? Yeah, but well, bottom line, the powers that be that just so happen to be white, a lot of them hated on those cities and towns that were flourishing or they were self-sufficient. They pretty much burned down... They they burnt down and bombed Black Wall Street in Tulsa, Oklahoma, out of hate and disgust because of those brothers and sisters were making money. Shoot, from what I understand, um, they they, um, they even had some of them, like two, three of them, even had their own airplanes or airlines or something like that. You know, their own airplane. So you know, the ignorant just so happen to be white society that's hating comes through and burns everything down. Because they hate Rosewood, they were it was a flourishing farming community. They was making moves, all kinds of money, all kinds of money. But 
you know, one white woman hollered rape. They saw an excuse to use their hatred, their hate, to destroy Rosewood and kill a bunch of people. That ain't had nothing to do with anything. And it was a white dude that slept with the woman, and she got mad and said as a black dude that raped her because she couldn't face her husband. You know, so they used their already hate that was there. That isn't the rape as an excuse to set it off and then spread it out throughout the town in Rosewood. You see what I'm saying? That's a grand example of hate, being a hater. You know, that doesn't help anybody. All it does is bring destruction and it tarnishes your reputation. It kills the soul to be hateful. You know, in my book, Dragonflies in the Swamp, you can get online uh, through pippinpens.com. Or, uh, you'll see the link inside the descriptions box. I'm going to have this on YouTube and, and um, before the end of this week. And, you know, I've, I've faced a few haters in my day. A few haters in my day. Like, it's one situation. This dude who I know, right, when he got out of jail, or prison, really, when he got out of jail serving like eight years, he decided to jump into the dope game. All right, whatever. Okay, he's getting his money. Um, the guy wasn't no idiot. He was in, He had honors classes while we were in elementary school, you know. He was a bright dude. The only downside is, you know, he fell into the thug life, you know. I ain't going to say thug life. He fell into that drug life, you know, that hustling flow life down here in Miami where it, it ain't that hard. It is not that hard to, to get into the dope game down here. The question is, can you survive it, you know? Are you smart enough, strong enough, brave enough, bold enough to, to hold your own down here? That's the question. But point blank, he jumped in the game, and he was making moves, making money. And in like, what, four to six months' time after he got out, four to six months' time after he um, started getting into the game or whatever, he was able to buy himself uh, a box Chevy. That That's a box Chevy Caprice. That's a uh, Chevy Caprice that was made in the 80s, 80s, early 90s, the, the box shape. And he got himself a box Chevy, okay. And he hooked it up, you know, nice, nice little pearl paint, 24-inch rims, riding high, riding hard, right? Every time, every time I saw the brother, I said it was up to him. You know, no hate. I was like, shoot, I got to step my game up. Yeah, I understand he doing that, but I got to figure out something where I got to get me some paper. You understand what I'm saying? Shoot, it got to the point where at one time I thought about jumping in and all that, but be, you know, through the grace of whoever up above, you know, <laughs> Uh, certain situations didn't go through. I explained all this in my book. But thankfully, it didn't go down the way it went down. But by him stunting and shining, I was like, all right, man, you're doing your thing. You're doing your thing. All right, cool. You know, just keep, just remember, you know, get up out of the game the first chance you get. Because the thing about the dope game, you jump in, is meant for you to set yourself up into something legal and then you make your way out. It's not meant for you to make a career out of it. Name one dope boy besides the United States of America, ha ha ha, that retired as a as a kingpin. You know? Damn near every last one of them on the illegal side of the ball, they either get locked up, shot up and yeah, locked up, shot up, and and if they get shot up, they a lot of them end up dying, you know? So they is either dead Shot a few times, and but you still living, but it hurts. <laughs> you know, you might be paralyzed, or or whenever it gets too cold, certain parts of the way you got shot at gets hot. You know, <laughs> or you end up behind bars for however long. You know, yeah. But point blank, it's meant for you to go in, and get your money, and get out. And you know, I was telling him this. I was, you know, just. Sort of reminding him, like, hey, man, you know, yeah, do what you do, but get into something legal, bro. I'm just saying. You know, I kept it 100 with the brother. And 
I'd go around the way sometimes, and this is another reason why I don't really hang out around the way too much. So just stopped hanging out around the way a long time ago. Yeah, you know, some dudes who um, I mean, we all knew each other. We all grew up with one another, knowing each other since from elementary, middle, and high school. We all grew up with each other, and the brother who was doing his thing, you know, you know, moving weight or whatever. Other brothers was like, ah. Oh, he think he all that because he got a little box or whatever. He think he all that because he doing this, he doing that. And it got to the point where some guys, some guys even started having conversations or robbing the brother. Yeah, straight up, straight up. They even had stories. They was like, oh, we going to get him. We going to catch him slipping. Da, 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 da. Oh, we going we gonna to watch, watch, this, that, and the third. Thankfully, nothing went down. They were just talking noise or whatever. But just to hear these guys. And I'm not advocating, you know, somebody jumping dope game or what have you. You know, but I'm sitting here like the guy figured something out that, he, you know, that he's good at. Be it illegal. He still found something that he was good at, you know? And these dudes sitting here just talking all kinds of trash, but then when they see the brother face-to-face, they smiling. Smiling your face, you know what I mean? Just hating. And I, I see the, the hate and the fakeness, and I was like, man, you know what? I'll see y'all on the sly. You know, I ain't have to say nothing out loud like, oh, I'm going to stop chilling with y'all. No, I just slowly but surely, slowly but surely just disappeared from everybody, you know. When dudes see me, you know, they come at me with a story like, oh, man, I heard you done moved to Atlanta. Or well, I done heard you went this way and you were that way. You know, and I'd be like, yeah, I was out there for a little bit. When in actuality, I only went there on vacation. But, you know, I'll, I'll let somebody believe what they want to believe to throw them off my scent because I understand that you hate <laughs> Yeah, man. So some dudes, they, they see somebody coming up, and they let it. It's like it's things they sold to see you prosper, you know? If anybody wants to chime in on this here, um, the, comp- the phone number is 347-989-8183. It's 347-989-8183. All right? Just press 1 and be heard, okay? Now, with all of that being said, you know, all you know, the examples of the level of hate that goes around, you know, people talking behind their back from people actually getting up and making a move on other people, you know, because their situation is shitty, you know, and that and that's the, and that's the deep down part. That's the deep down part, really. You know, a lot of these people, it's like, it's like, okay, they're whatever it is that they're doing ain't, ain't working or whatever. You know, they're working a nine to five that they don't want to be at. They got kids that they can't really afford to to take care of. They had dreams, goals, and ambitions that they kind of wanted to get into or wouldn't mind looking into, but they could either talk themselves out of it or figure they can get to it later, you know. And then life catches up to them. You know, they have a kid. They they have a woman that, that's always nagging them, and they're looking at their life like, damn, I done messed up, you know what I mean? I done messed up. I done slipped up. This, like, this woman's getting on my nerves. My baby mama, she tripping. Oh, my wife, she nags me. I really can't stand to be with her, or, damn, I really hate my boss. He's always talking trash to me. I, I feel like a little boy when I step through the door. I be, I can't stand to go there. Sometimes I be looking at, 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 at my car and be like, do I even really want to head in there today? But if I don't, my lights will get cut off, my car will get repossessed, and I got to keep this. You know, they're pretty much a slave to their possessions, you know, or they're pretty much a prisoner to their job. And that I also explained in my book, Dragonflies in the Swamp, on how, you know, things that are around you where you don't want to be there can end up being your own personal prison, you know. I, I, I made sure to explain all that in the short story, in the, excuse me, the anecdotal prose poem, uh, as it goes by. I made sure to explain that. And 
because they they feel down about their position in life, because they feel bad about what it is that they're doing or, or where it is that they don't want to be, they find themselves looking at everybody else that's successful, that's happy. And they're like, man, I don't want to hear all that, you know? So now uh, they start to nitpick. Yeah, he balling, but he five foot five. He a midget. You know, I'm I'm six two. Is that and the third? I bet you I could pull his girl. This that and the third. Yeah, he got money, but I bet you he paying for them females to stay around him. Now, yeah, he got money, but he, you know. <laughs> and then with females or whatever, you know, they say that women are naturally jealous. With and I, I and to an extent, I kind of believe that. I kind of believe that. You know. Kinda, but then you have some dudes they act just like bitches, you know. So that's why I'm like kinda believe that, you know, because you have jealous people that are that are male and female across the board. Men and women we're very much alike more than we think. Yeah, women are t- are supposed to be considered more emotional, and men are supposed to be more in, tr- in control of they how they feel and keep cool under pressure. But that's that's the whole idea of it all, you know. But point blank, you have dudes that act like bitches, and they, and they sit up there and complain and hate on the next dude. And you have some females, oh, that ain't her real hair. Oh, that bitch got on makeup. Oh, that ain't you know, that ain't no real red bottom. She got them shits from such and such on 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 Canal Street, you know. <laughs> Sitting up there just talking trash and hating, looking at their life like, you know, they can't stand their baby daddy, can't stand that he cheating on her, can't stand that he beating on her, can't stand how he run, probably sleeping with her homegirls or or some chick that she don't like that stay around the corner or that or that's at her job. You know, she's just hating her life. And then when she sees somebody successful or whatever, it's two things. It's either A, she respects them, and or idolizes them, like how damn near every woman is in the black community, damn near, I ain't say all, damn near, a grand majority of are Beyonce fans, or they have some level of respect for Beyonce, you know, that she's like the new, she's like their goddess damn near, you know, like how Tupac was, 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 was like the leader for, for, for thug dudes or whatever, you know what I mean, <laughs> back in the 90s or whatever, back when I was a shorty, you know, and and <laughs> they either give props to her or they hate her. Like, oh, that, she ain't really had that kid. This, that, and the third. That was a fake pregnancy. Oh, that bitch, she thinks she all that. She ain't have to break up Destiny's Child. That's why such and such was the biggest, better singer out of the group anyway. You know, just <laughs> sitting out there just running their mouth, hating. Just hating. Hard, you know, hate with a capital H. You know what I mean? And they just just let their lives dictate how they react toward people who are successful. You know, and it burns them deep down inside. I mean, wars were fought and battles were were, were raged, riots were sprung up because of hate. That's how deep it impacts a, a people, period. A person, a family, you know, f- you're fueled by hatred, hating on others. You know, shoot, who, who was it, the Hatfields and McCoys or something like that? I hope I'm saying the names right, but, you know, for the longest time, their families had feuds, killing each other, fighting, throwing down when they see each other, you know what I mean? Just hate, long-standing Un, unexplainable hate, and it doesn't it doesn't work for anybody. It doesn't work. I'm gonna go on a commercial break soon. All right. Uh, those who who down to catch the second half, uh, the number is three four seven nine eight nine eight one eight three. Three four seven nine eight nine eight one eight three. All right. Now that I explain like what hate is, it's really a condition or whatever that that's taught or something that uh, that's a reaction to those who feel powerless in their situation you know I'm gonna drop some game on what you can do to flip all that around when we come back all right Peace. 
peace. This is City Hampton of the HSDO Law Mission. Utilize the ancient universal powers of nature. For ages, gemstones have been an integral part of holistic healing. With their unique molecular structures, they possess the ability to emit healing energies that tune the mind, body, and spirit. Gemstone therapy is a subtle and effective way to help introduce new and positive energies into your life. Gemini Creations, Gemstone Consultations are a unique and an effective way to calculate the best gemstones for you based on your personal life experiences and astrological information. These consultations help to provide you with a comprehensive understanding of the gemstones that work best for your energy. With your gemstone consultation, you will receive a gemstone consultation report comprising of a list of recommended gemstones, as well as a complimentary prenatal chart. Gemini Creations also provides custom-created amulets, gemstone elixirs, gemstone jewelry, and a variety of gemstone formations. To learn more about Gemini Creations, visit us on www.geminicreations.newshop.com Spelled G-E-M-I-N-E-Y-E Creations dot N-U-W-S-H-O-P dot com And like us on Facebook www.facebook.com backslash Gemini Creations Peace and blessings All the darkest nights Watch my ether glow You say you're acquainted with that so travel Tell me where you trying to go I believe in heaven, God is Noel So we treat the earth like a hotel Don't treat a nigga like a simple earthling The stars that you wish upon are nowhere She said she never fucked an alien It was so amazing She woke up the next morning Had to ask me like what day we in I ain't playing Stars are constellations Now she's convinced that we should be studied By cause they eating I don't think we're from here But you probably believe me Cause we could bring a channel through And we don't need no TV I'm convinced there ain't too many other people like me Cause I've been waiting on someone like you to come and find me I'm out here giving light Coming to my open You see a nigga trying to make sun Baby coming to my light Need you in my orbit, let me shine and let a brighter day come I can overreach up, but you know you glow like Osiris And I got nothing for Cleopatra, tell me what's the queen to a goddess Night is overreach up, and you know I glow like Osiris Like Osiris, and I've been traveling back and forth Universe searching for a goddess And you're looking like
me Traveling back and forth through this universe Searching for a goddess And you're looking like that Hey, what's good, family? I'm back. And like I was stating before, I was talking about the definitions of, of hate, the examples of hate and the de- definition of it, you know? Uh, the Webster's Dictionary definition of it, um, I'm paraphrasing here, of hate is you pretty much want something eradicated, destroyed, you know? When you see something and you hate it, you you automatically beef with it to the point where you want to stab it in the neck, you want to shoot it in its head, you want it disappeared, you want it gone off of the surf, destroyed, discombobulated. No, not even discombobulated, dismantled completely. You know, that's heat. And earlier in the show, I, I, I told you guys the examples of heat. Now, this time around, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and, and, and hopefully take you guys into the play it cool, into the play it cool, learn something. Let me pull you away from all that hate. First of all, right. First of all, to step your game up, you have to realize your situation. Look at your situation around you, okay? You see all of that in which you dislike about your situation? Don't concentrate on that because you can always be complaining about it because you see it every day. So, okay, that's the quickest thing to complain about. All right? Don't complain about it. Just look at the, the things around you that's helping you. All right? Concentrate on those things that are helping you. Okay? Now, once you realize that, once you realize that, once you see that life ain't too bad, it ain't, it ain't, you know, it ain't the end of the world, you have a shot at turning everything around, living a more peaceful existence, a more helpful existence, a more healthy existence, the minute you notice that, fall back for a second. What is it, what is it that makes you happy? What is it that you're good at that you wouldn't mind doing for free? Okay? What is it that you're good at? That nobody else ain't too many people that are on your level doing what it is that you really have in mind. All right? Just concentrate on those good points that you have. Like if you're great at making quilts or something like that, if you make if you're great at shoot, even if you're a janitor, if you if you're a janitor, right, and you have some one of the best cleaning techniques out there, you know how to clean the floor, a room, and every a, a room, a bathroom, a office space like nobody's business, right? Okay. What you do, like if you were a janitor, for, hypothetically speaking, you concentrate on getting better at that. Concentrate on getting better at that, right? You show up on time, your uniform's on point. You're concentrating on you. You're learning how to use different techniques on, okay, instead of instead of pine saw for the floor, you use mopping glow for this. Instead of instead of using bleach for the toilets, you use pine saw for the toilets because it disinfects and leaves a better smell. Okay, instead of Using this for that, yeah, you understand your techniques. You 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 figure out how to do the job better, okay? You figure out how to do the job better, more effective, and that looks good on you. Next thing you know, you're getting pay raises. You're getting, you know, you, you might even be in charge of a staff one day, be, be lead custodian in that in a building. And with time, you get more money, more seniority. Because you're overseeing more people, you're training and make, making people better. All right, and if you're business savvy, right, you might take those techniques and how you do it, and, 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 and your ability to work with other people and lead other people, lead the janitorial staff to make sure everything's on point and okay. You 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 have the team morale up. 
you understand how to deal with people and all that, okay, you'll mess around and start your own cleaning company. Okay? You take that, start your own cleaning company. All right? You don't know nothing about business. You got to keep in mind, instead of sitting up there hating on other people that, oh, he got this company and they started off with this here and, and that guy's parents gave him a $100,000 loan. That's the only reason why he's able to come up with such a huge business. I'm like, all right, cool, whatever. But we talking about you now, okay? You have the background. You have the skill. So then you start stacking your chips. You incorporate your business. You get yourself in a little van, start putting your pennies together because now you're at a certain level where you you know made a little extra money. You cut back on a few things, buy a van, buy some equipment, incorporate your business, and you're learning about the business side of it. You take a few classes on how to start a small business. You take a few classes on how to file taxes and stuff like that. You take a few classes on bookkeeping, and you, you figure out which softwares work best with your company to keep track of of the um, of the uh, of the accounts receiving uh, accounts re- receivable and the, and the accounts payable you start looking at things that uh, uh, on the business side of things you know you start making a full understanding that that janitor that was with just once a dude sweeping the floor mopping the place now you know, six, seven, eight months later, after concentrating on him, instead of looking at him himself like, damn, I'm just a worthless janitor, instead of looking at himself like that, he's like, you know what, I got better at this, I got my own technique, I have a team, you know what, I'm going to start a cleaning company. Boom, he went out, got the education he needed to start his own cleaning company. Now, guess what, now he's a small business owner. Now he's a small business owner, okay. You go to an office building, like, hey, do you guys have a cleaning service already? No. Okay, this is what I charge. Oh, do you have a cleaning service already? Well, this is what I charge. I've been doing this for years. I have recommendations at different schools. Okay. They see that you, no matter everywhere you go, you've just been a, a, a pillar of what it means to be a great employee, chief custodian for, like, you know, 5 to 10, 15 years, however long you have the experience. Now they're looking at you like, okay. You know what? Our cleaning service, they have been slacking and they've been kind of charging us, like how much they're charging us this much. All right, you know what? We'll give you, we'll just pay us 10 to ten to 20% less. We'll, we'll take a 10, 10 to 20% less cut and we'll, and we'll work with that. All right, cool. Boom. Now he has a building that's under his belt. He has a client that's under his belt. You see what I'm saying? Like he might start off on the weekends as, as clean up or whatever. Now, he might go work in school during the week, but then on the weekends or, you know, for a few hours a night or whatever, he'll leave the the school gig at, like, 6, 7 o'clock and then go to the office gig at, like, 9, 10 o'clock, clean up until, like, 2 in the morning, leave, have to get up, you know, do that for a while, but he's working on himself. Now, keep in mind, what did I say he was? He was a janitor. Hypothetically speaking, this person was a janitor, lowly janitor. But guess what? Instead of bitching and moaning and complaining, he sat there and figured out, he worked on himself, like, how could I get better? How could I get more money? How could I be more fulfilled in my field? Yeah, I enjoy getting up and cleaning. That's my thing. I love that. That's that's my niche, you know? And that hypothetical janitor now, He's a small business owner. Now, because he has a client under his belt and the client is, is enjoying his work, right? The client is enjoying his work, seeing this. Like, okay, well, um, this, you know, next thing you know, he's recommending them. Like, hey, your office looks nice. Hey, who do you have? Oh, um, uh, is this, this guy who, who we just, uh, his, he just started his own um, cleaning company, and he seems he he knows what he's really doing, and he shows up on time, does his job, j- job. He's wonderful. Hey, all right, give me his number, okay? Did he have a conversation with the uh, with the guy that just got recommended? That he just he he just got recommended to another gig. They have a meeting to the second gig. Now he has two clients under his belt. 
because they really appreciate what it, is, what it is he's doing. They like the prices that he's setting, and boom, he, now he has two clients on his belt. All right, cool. Now he's working these two clients. He he might take off a few less hours or whatever, you know, at, at his other job because he's starting to see other income come in, you know. But bottom line, with time, because he concentrated on himself, this hypothetical janitor concentrated on himself, he didn't see the negatives. All he did was figure out a way how to get better. He took the time to read, take courses, took the right steps, you know, probably even hollered at one or two folks that already started their own thing and got information from them on how the game goes, you know, have a mentor in his pocket that he can reach out to and they can exchange information and help each other work work and get more get more things going, you know? Now this hypothetical janitor, you know, hypothetical janitor, two clients, now a third person comes along. It's like, hey man, I I'm really enjoying what what who did you you know, now he has a third client. Okay, he can't handle these three jobs, so now the people that's been working for him, or he might still be in touch with somebody that used to work with him or under him as a janitor at the schools or whatever, hit them up like, hey, man, you need some part-time work? I have, a, I have a few years coming up, and I can't really handle all this by myself. I'm going to need some help. Boom, now he has his first employee. See what I'm saying? Now he has his first employee. You know what I mean? So now that he has his first employee, it might be a few tax breaks he can get. Why? Because he took the time to learn and focus on his business. You know, he has now he has business cards up. You know, he has a little money where he can advertise or whatever, get the get his get the word out there. Now when he starts advertising, next thing you know, three more people hit him up. You know, you see what I'm saying? Now it is is more than just two, three clients or whatever on some part time stuff. Now he has six, seven clients in total that like what he's doing, okay, instead of just one person, I have to hire maybe three more people to help do this, do all this work, I can't do all these gigs by myself, okay, now he's leaving, slowly but surely leaving out of the door at his janitor job with the schools and is focused on his cleaning service now, you see what I'm saying? Now he's away from the janitor, um, janitor job at the schools focused totally on his business now because he's making that much money to where he could pay his bills and then some. Okay, he takes some of that money, recycles it, puts it back into promotion. Okay, now through promotion, instead of seven, instead of seven clients, that seven goes to, let's say, 12 or 11, you know. And he has to hire two more people. Now he has, what, seven, eight people that are working under him has his own little office set up to you know keep track of everything, and now boom, he is a small business owner with a bunch of clients and growing, because he shows them his techniques on how to clean, and they go out and do and do a good job or what have you, make the company look great, the pillar of professionalism. Everybody's enjoying what it is he's doing. And everybody respects what it is he's got going because he puts out great work. You see what I'm saying? Now, instead of being in one city, you know, say that he gets, like, say that he's down here in Miami, Miami-Dade County. Okay, he might link up with somebody in Broward County. That's the county right above us. That's where Fort Lauderdale is at. Say that he he lands a building that hears about his service and a uh, small office building somewhere in Hollywood, Florida, near near like let's say let's say the Hard Rock Casino or something like that. Okay, boom. Now he has a client in the next county. You see? So now he might have to hire two more people with that's in that area who can come to work and handle that business. You see what I'm saying? Now his business is expanding. And keep in mind, he just all he did was start off as a janitor, lonely, simple janitor. But he worked on himself instead of sitting down hating. And then who knows? He might even come up with his own cleaning product. 
because he come up with his own cleaning product, get it patented and everything. Next thing you know, he's the next Mr. Clean. You know, he, they're using only his products that he developed, you know, that he sees works or whatever, gets it all patented or whatever. Uh, and because he does a good job with his with his business, he has people, you know, clients that are that appreciate his work and and see that his products work and does a good job. They'll give test, test. They'll be happy to give a testimony on the work that he's doing and how great his product works. You see what I'm saying? And who knows? He might even run into a silent partner or angel investor because of the different business people that he's cleaning for. See what I'm saying? Now he has a he might a possible agent investor stuff in stores, commercials going on, his cleaning service is still going. And keep in mind, what did he start off as? As a simple janitor. Because he concentrated on himself. He saw a lane that he feel he can he can exploit and he concentrated on every day becoming better as a business person and not hating on the next man that got it all. And guess what? The ones that they're hating on, he's probably rubbing elbows with that person right now, you know, at the golf course. They they cracking jokes, sharing information or whatever. You know, might even might even partner up in the long run. You know, one you know, his company might get bought out or he might get big enough to buy out the other guy and they merge companies because it happens all the time. It's been going on for the longest time, especially with these cell phone companies, you know, they merging left and right. You know, now they have a conglomerate, a cleaning conglomerate, where they have a service and products to sell. Conglomerate, making moves, making money, while everybody else looking at their life mad as hell, hating. See, the point where I'm at now, you know, I'm pushing my books, and I'm and I'm offering my ghostwriter services. I'm writing one girl's book, and I'm doing little gigs here and there to to, to pay my bills and promote. And get to the next level, because I have a I have a vision and I have an understanding of how the game goes. And every day I'm learning. See, I don't just run around thinking that I know everything. Like every you know, when I see a business seminar that can help me out, I take it. When I see uh, uh, Queen Tay, uh, Tay Queen, excuse me, she you know she schooled me on on some marketing classes that I had to take. I, mean, I still got the notes right here, and I and I followed them. I looked through them, and I and I apply everything. I apply everything, and in the long run, I'm pretty sure that it's going to turn around. Especially when I hit the streets pretty soon, um, when I order my first twelve books to go out and promote. Shoot, my book, Dragonflies in the Swamp. It's inside um, Florida International University's library. It got accepted into their collections, and anybody can just go out there and pick it up. Now, because it's in the college library. Say that a professor from University of Miami, that's a multicultural um, literature professor or black black history professor or black literature professor, uh, say that they hear about my book, what I'm putting in as part of the curriculum. They curriculum they can go to FIU's library, get um, get a copy. You know, they can order it, look through it, speak to me, and then I can supply them copies of it. You see what I'm saying? So now I have a database where I don't have to sit there and try to coax every professor to get into the libraries. They can just get it from FIU's library, and I can donate it to them. I can just donate another copy if they need it. You see what I'm saying? I pretty much killed a 1,000 birds with one stone because how many universities and colleges are out there? You see what I'm saying? I didn't know that part of the game, but the guy in the library, he schooled me on it. So now all I got to do is talk to different multicultural professors. Just got to figure out a way to get to catch their attention, have them read it, be inspired, and then they run with it. Because that was the game plan I was going to run with when I was um, working with, was soon to sign to a, a, a publishing company. And I still got love for the lady. Uh, her company's called Amistad Publishing. Not the one that was under HarperCollins. All right? It's a difference. But bottom line, that was the game plan I was going to run with with them. They didn't have the money to push me, so I'm doing this myself. And thanks to Tay Queen um, dropping game my way and me taking time to read books and get a full understanding, every day I just try to figure out ways how to get better at my craft, how to get better at building my business, how to get better at, at, at becoming a better writer and a, and a better salesman and a better marketer. You see what I'm saying? 
The only thing I got to do now is head out to FIU, promote on the campus, head out to different literary spots, head out to different places where I know they respect the arts or what have you, get my information out there. They check it out. They spread the word, have them sign up to the newsletter that I have for the company, and then expand and grow as time goes by. See what I'm saying? Rome wasn't built in a day, but with everything that I got going now, trust me, I'm going to be all right. The only thing I got to do is step on the gas and keep pushing forward and keep learning as I go. Keep getting a full understanding from those who've been there before. You know, be willing to take to be somebody's mentor if they've been there, if they're successful in their in their endeavor, in their endeavors, or have a grand idea of how things go. You know, be like the janitor who I was hypothetically bringing up. All right, be like that janitor. No matter what position you're in, it could be the lowliest parts. If you have a niche that you're good at. I mean, I mean, shoot, if you're great at video games, I figure out how to be a, a gaming champion, make money off that, or a gaming designer, that designer, make money off that. Shoot, if you have a slick mouthpiece or whatever and great at talking to people, shoot, you could be a motivational speaker. You're going to have to figure out the ropes, you know, link up with people that's been there, put in a little time, put in a little effort, uh, you shoot, team no sleep, as some people put it, where you, you where you sleep for a few hours, get up, go ahead and grind, and you keep pushing forward. But bottom line, you know, you focus it on you. You focus it on getting better. And then when you get to some place, turn around and you give back. Because there are others trying to come up too who have grand ideas who or who are expanding upon the ideas that you've set and you can work with them, or, or they can work with you, and then boom, next thing you know, you have a new CEO that, that can that's leading your company to new heights because you turned around and gave somebody a shot. And then if they want to branch out on their own, you could be their silent partner, and then, then boom. Next thing you know, you're a silent, you have your company, and you're, you're a silent partner invested in another company getting money on the back end with, with, with somebody that used to be your CEO. You understand what I'm saying? It, it it all works. It all works. You just have to be willing to work on yourself. Don't hate. Just concentrate on you. Concentrate on getting better. Physically, mentally, spiritually. You know? Just work on that. That's the information that I got. So brothers can step their game up. So you can have the life that you want to have brothers and sisters, you know, instead of sitting there talking trash about whatever rappers, athletes, or business people, don't hate on them. Learn from them. Learn from them. Get some game in your life. All right? Because as, 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 as bigoted as some, some of these idiots seem, like Trump and Vince McMahon in a way, you know, as bigoted as some of them may seem from, from what I've read in their articles or whatever with their interviews with their closed-mindedness, I still respect their work ethic. I respect their work ethic, work ethic, and I respect the fact that they're willing to be patient and understand and cope. You know what I'm saying? I absorb that information and I keep pushing forward, and I hope to at least shake their hands and be like, "Thank you for giving me this knowledge." Boom. All right. Um, check out what everybody has going on on Anaesthetic Media uh, at Blog Talk Radio forward slash Anaesthetic Media. Um, you can see the archives of this show and, and many others. Uh, you can see everything what they have going on at a, at the media on dot blog talk dot uh, dot on uh, at anzigmedia dot wordpress dot com and be friends with them on Facebook at on um, facebook dot com forward slash at anzigmedia. You can see everything what I'm doing on www.pippinpens.com as and you can also check me out add me as a friend on Facebook King Nick Anthony thumbs up my Dragonflies in the Swamp page get the book helpful information in there and peace oh and next week I'm having um, a special guest come through we're going to touch on the subject of polygamy that's right more than one spouse <laughs> The subject of polygamy with Brother Hondo. Now, that's what I call Hondo Solomon.
That's who we're going to have on. All right? Peace.